Aloha and welcome to this practice wad called Browser History 1. And um, this wad is just to help you get started doing very basic HTML. For some of you who have background in web application development, this is going to seem like ridiculously stone age. This is going to feel like you're building a Flintstones web page, but um, that's okay. You know, um, we'll soon, you know, get to the, the good stuff. So. Um, just bear with it and use it as a kind of a relaxing wad. Um, see if you can beat me in the in the time department. And so what we're basically going to do is we're going to build a um, a web page, a really ghetto web page that looks like this with very minimal formatting, but it will gives a chance to to kind of fool around with IntelliJ and of course GitHub and um, and uh, you know I don't know. I think it's I think it's a good thing to try to do. So. Uh, the first thing is to start our timer, and once we've done that, we got to go to GitHub, and we're going to be creating a um, a GitHub repository called Browser History One. So we'll go here, and we'll call it Browser History One, and. Uh, I don't know that we need any git ignore actually because there's no code in this, but we do always want a license. So we'll make this new license and we'll create the repo. And having created the repo, we want to clone it in the desktop as we always want to do. And so we'll call this browser history one um, inside our directory holding all our kind of stuff. And so in a few short seconds, we should have our. Um, local repo kabang okay so that's done um, and so the next thing we want to do is create an IntelliJ project called browser history one in our repo so let's bring up IntelliJ idea um, also you'll notice I'm using the large screen um, for this and uh, that's um, I think it's going to make it easier for you to see what's going on. It gives me a little bit of an unfair advantage, actually, because I'm not flipping back and forth in a small window. But, um, but you know, maybe it will encourage some of you to um, to get a large screen display because they really do make life a lot more convenient when you're doing web application development. The more pixels you have, in my opinion, you know, the better. Okay. So now we've created this browser history one, it's in our repo, and we need a file within it called index.html. So I'm going to do a propeller n. Whoops, not in the right application, so that didn't work correctly. Click over here, propeller n, and I'm going to create a new HTML file, and I'm going to call it <laughs> I'm going to call it index.html. And sure, we'll add it to Git. Okay, and so uh, whose title and top level section is named a history of browsers. So the title should be a history of browsers. And then uh, we're going to have an h1 tag. So, oops, slash h1, a history of browsers. Okay, um, and we're going to structure the document into four subsections. Okay, called uh, introduction. So the subsections are going to be H2, introduction, uh, a brief history of IE. At this point, I'm going to propeller D to make copies because, um, as you can see, it saves typing. A brief history of Firefox and a brief history of Chrome. Okay. The links take you to text you can use for each of these sections. Okay, so um, I guess if we click on this, okay, there's our history. So I'll copy it. And, uh, or that's our introduction. Um, and I put it in here. And if I go back, it says, be sure to, to, um, to preserve the paragraphs. And the way you do that is by enclosing things in the paragraphs tag. Um, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to select this text, and then we're going to use um, 
uh, Command Alt J to surround with a tag in HTML JSP. So we'll type return, and then we do a P. You can see that it um, put the P tag around that text, which is super awesome. So we'll do that again. Um, propeller shift J, surround with a tag, type P, and we're done. Okay, and then unfortunately we've got to um, to repeat that for each of these. So I'll copy. This is my brief history of IE. And we want to make these into paragraphs, so we'll do propeller shift J, surround, P, done. And I bet you there's some way to kind of repeat the last command in IntelliJ. Wouldn't that be cool? Propeller shift, you can do that in Emacs. Um, and then we uh, have to go back, so that was IE. There's a certain amount of repeated stuff in here. I don't know if that's a good thing. It doesn't take that much longer to do it, but you do kind of feel sometimes like you're just um, you're just repeating yourself. But maybe that'll help you learn these key bindings, right? I don't know. One can always hope. Fellowship J, it's round, P, turn. Okay, and then we just got one more to do. Let's get that puppy done. Brief history of Chrome. Sometimes you should actually read this if you're interested in these, because these are this is actually you know not Lauren Lauren Ipsum. It's actual text that says something. That's a J surround P return, and then it says J P return. There we go. Okay. Phew. Um, so we got all the text, preserve the paragraphs, create one link within each section to an external web page. Um, so, uh, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to enable live reload. So let's do that right now because that does make life a little easier. So I go here, click add, find browser history one, choose folder. Okay, so the live reload is now going. And then the second thing we want to do is let's uh, make a new page and then open file. And then let's go to browser history one, index.html, we'll open it here. Okay, and now we can see. Um, and then after we click uh, this button to actually in, uh, enable it, we can see, for example, if I change the, if I just add a D here, we can see it shows up right away in the in the uh, display version. So that's a nice way of of being able to kind of interactively we're making changes in our development environment and seeing immediately the changes, the the render changes. It's almost like WYSIWYG, you know, kind of, but not quite. Um, okay, so now we got to create one link with each within each section to an external web page. Let's take, let's make the first one Tim Berners-Lee. So if I go here and type him in, uh, and we just kind of pick that first link at random, or, or not, sure, why not? Um, so I'll make a copy. And then, since I've selected that, I can do my same trick, control to j and this time, I put an A in, and then uh, href equals, and it's nice. It kind of you know completes it, but I'm going to actually paste the the um, the thing in here, and so now we've got our first link. Oh my goodness, I don't want to see any of that stuff. Um, and now you can see Tim Berners-Lee shows up here, and if we look at the bottom of the screen down there. Or we, you know, we could just click it, but now I'm a little irritated at that link because it was giving me that junk. Okay, so we got our first one. Um, what should be our uh, NCSA? Let's look up NCSA. NCSA. National Computing. National Center for Supercomputing Applications. Why, every 
everything is taking so long. It's really cutting into our wad time here. Um, so we'll double click this, we'll do propeller shift J, and we'll surround with the A tag, and then we'll say href equals, and um, now we've got NCSA, as soon as we save it out, there it is right there in our rendered window. Firefox, uh, let's see. Well, I guess we just do Firefox, what the heck? So, Firefox. Uh, use that link. Copy. Propeller ship J. Surround with this. A, href. Whoops. A too happy there. href. There's a thing. And uh, do this. And now we can see the Firefox link is down here. And then Eric Schmidt. Let's make. Let's find out about Eric Schmidt. What the heck, Eric Schmidt? From Wikipedia. Okay, there's a link for him. And we'll do a fellowship J surround A H ref. Just type it in. Save. And Eric Schmidt is here. Okay, so finally. We've got those links. Create an initial section called Table of Contents and create an itemized list within it with links to each of the four internal sections in this document. So it's supposed to look like that. Uh, so we can say H2, Table of Contents. And then we're going to have a list with an item in it. And it's going to be a a href equals uh, that you know the the tag we can do I guess we can just do pound intro so it's going to be a name tag and then introduction and um, let's see what this is actually looking like. Okay, so it's introduction, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome. Um, so I'll go back here and I'll propeller D to get a duplicate. And say IE. And then we can say uh, function option delete to delete that line. Internet, Internet Explorer, propeller D. And then uh, option delete, delete backwards, two words. And this is Firefox and Firefox. And then a propeller D. Option function delete to go forward. Uh, Chrome is the last one. Chrome. Okay, so there's our table of contents. If we save it out, you should see it here. Okay, that looks pretty much just like what we see in the image. The only problem is it's actually not hooked up to, it's not going to scroll to the spot because we don't have those name tags in. So we'll, uh, we'll select this and we'll say propeller shift J, surround with a tag and the name. Uh, name equals uh, intro and then select that fellowship J surround with tag a name equals IE and then find this H2 fellowship J surround with tags a name equals Firefox and then find this final one. That's J surround a name and it's Chrome. Okay, so we save this all out and we kind of make things short. We see if we go to Internet Explorer, it uh, does page 
So introduction, Firefox goes to Firefox, and if we make it really short, then we go Chrome, goes to Chrome. Okay, so it does appear that we have made those name links work correctly. So, we've got the links, we've got initial section table of contents, itemized link, links to the four sections. Okay, then we got to start, the three sections describing the browser should start with their logos. They should have a width of 100 pixels. Okay, so that's the last piece of this. And so, uh, we want to say, we go in here, um, Internet Explorer, it should start with the IMG. Source, uh, source, whoops, sorry, source equals, and uh, we'll copy the link address and we'll paste it here. Width equals 100 pixels. Um, and if we save this out, there we go, we got our brief history of IE. Here it is up here, here it is down here. Um, so let's copy the link address here. And in the Firefox IMG source equals this, width equals 100 px slash save. There's our Firefox logo. And then finally Chrome, copy link address, go over here, IMG, darn it, uh, source equals the link, width equals 100px, close bracket, save it out, and there's our Chrome. Okay, so the logo should be displayed with a page with width of 100 pixels. I think we've got something that looks just like it. So at this point, we're supposed to commit the changes to GitHub and check to see that they are there. So to do that, we've got to bring back our GitHub, initial commit, well, let's just say finished wad. So commit all this junk to browser history one. Time clicks away. Jeez. Okay. And still waiting. Done. View on GitHub. And there it is index.html. Okay. Um, and there it is like that. Cool. All right. So our timer is at 1730. Um, and that's how long it takes for me to do this. Hopefully you can do better. Um, but at any rate, I think it's hopefully giving you some sense of how to use um, IntelliJ and some of the nice kind of completion mechanisms that it has.